Now we're going to talk about the effect of friction on the wind. So we know from the previous videos that we have the pressure gradient force that blows wind from high to low pressure and we also have the Coriolis force that is the effect of the earth spinning beneath all freely moving objects in our atmosphere. In the northern hemisphere it pulls to the right, in the southern hemisphere it pulls objects to the left and the resultant would be called geostrophic balance and this is where geostrophic wind comes into play and so here we have the net result wind from the balance between the Coriolis effect and the pressure gradient force that allows wind to travel parallel to isobars at upper levels of our atmosphere but at the surface it's a little bit different at upper levels we have wind speeds in the jet stream that can be very fast. They can be over 100 knots easily. But at the surface, if we experience 100 knot winds, that's some really ferocious winds. And that would most likely be either some severe tornado or hurricane. Um, and so those winds are not necessarily experienced at the surface. And why is that? Well, at the surface, yes, we do have windy days, because of the frictional surface of the earth, you have a braking force or a dragging force on the wind. And so this dragging force on a relatively smooth surface, so maybe you can think of you know, areas like the plains where it's relatively flat, this effect of friction is not as strong as a rugged terrain or a mountainous terrain or a hilly terrain. So say uh, a place um, that is uh, decent and elevated, Let, let's say, you know, in Colorado where they have, you know, the Rocky Mountains, you know, that would be a more rugged terrain. And so the effect of friction would be greater. And so what it does is that the net result of the wind actually crosses isobars at the surface. And so on a weather map, we don't necessarily see wind that flows parallel to isobars. We technically see winds that oftentimes cross isobars.